Hello, today we're going to look at conservation of mass, but before we do that, we're going to work out this thing called the relative formula mass, and we do that for compounds. Now, anytime you look at an atom in the periodic table, you'll see that we have at the top there a number called the relative atomic mass. So we can refer to that number at the top as the relative atomic mass. And we've worked with this before, and this will tell us the number of protons plus the number of neutrons that are present in the nucleus of the atom of that element. So for carbon, protons plus neutrons equals 12. Now we can use the relative atomic mass to work out something called the relative formula mass. Sometimes, in fact, uh, very often we don't have just elements hanging around, we have um, compounds. And here are four examples of compounds. We've got methane. In fact, oxygen is not a compound, it's an element, but we've got methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. And to work out the relative formula masses, we need the relative atomic masses. And th there they are on the screen for you. I just got those off the periodic table. You don't need to memorize those and you can use the periodic table to find those. So for methane, carbon's relative atomic mass is 12 and for hydrogen it's 1. So to work out the relative formula mass, we do 12 plus 4 times 1, which will give us 16. Remember that little 4 at the bottom of the hydrogen applies to the hydrogen and not to the whole compound or not to any other atoms that you have present. For oxygen, which is not a compound, the relative formula mass is 2 times 16, which is 32. And for carbon dioxide, it's 12 plus 2 times 16, which is 44. And for hydrogen, it's 2 times 1 plus 16, which is 18. Remember, there are no units for this. And these are the values for the examples that we've got on the screen. Now, what we can look at next is the idea of conservation of mass. And we're going to look at a simple equation. This is methane burning in air or burning with oxygen in the air. And the conservation of mass tells us that the number of atoms are the same before and after a chemical reaction. In other words, no atoms are gained or lost during a chemical reaction. And we can also say that the mass of the products equals the mass of the reactants in a chemical reaction. So the reactants in this case are the methane and the oxygen, and the products here are carbon dioxide and water. Now we can look at the number of atoms, but before we do that in this reaction, we actually have to look at the formula equation and we have to balance it. So you can have a go at that now. You can pause and have a go at that. But if not, the answers are two for water and two for oxygen, and that's now balanced. And if we look at the atoms in a diagrammatical form, we can see that the number of atoms are the same on each side of this equation. So the number of atoms of each element are the same. Let's just put a little full stop there for no. So we know it's an abbreviation for number. So we have one carbon atom in our methane and four hydrogen atoms. We have four atoms of oxygen that react with the methane. That gives us one molecule of carbon dioxide, which is one carbon and four oxygens altogether on the right hand side of this equation. And we end up also with four hydrogens. So you can see that we have four hydrogens on each side, one carbon on each side and four oxygen atoms on each side. So the number of atoms are the same. We call this the conservation of mass in terms of the atoms. But we can also look at it in terms of the relative formula masses as well. So if we work out the formula mass of each substance, we've got for methane it's 16, for oxygen it's 32, but we've got two of those, so it's got to be 2 times 32, which is 64. We must include that large 2. If we add those two together, we get a total of 80 on the left-hand side for the reactants. That's our total of our formula masses. And on the right-hand side, we have a relative formula mass of 44 for carbon dioxide and two 18s because we've got two molecules of water. That's 36. If we add that up and if we've done it correctly, that comes to 80 as well. So that's the total of the relative formula masses on the right hand side. And these two numbers are always going to be the same for a chemical reaction that has been balanced. Okay, now we can also say if we had 80 grams of our reactants, we would get 80 grams of our products as well. And that would be split into the number of grams just shown there. And we're going to look at that a bit more when we do reacting masses in a later video. Okay, so this is 
the conservation of mass. Now, sometimes we can be a little bit fooled when we see a chemical reaction. This is copper carbonate reacting or thermally decomposing into copper oxide and carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is a gas. Now, if you were to do an experiment where you weighed the uh, reactants and the products, you would see a redu reduction in the mass of the copper carbonate when it turned into or reacted to become copper oxide you see a reduction in mass and then you might think, well, that's a bit strange. How can we have a reduction in mass? But we've got to remember that carbon dioxide is a gas and that gas is given off to the atmosphere. And that's why we seemingly have a reduction in mass, but we actually, in actual fact, we don't. We can add the carbon dioxide and the copper oxide and the mass would be the same as the copper carbonate. In this reaction here, we have calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid to give calcium chloride, carbon dioxide and water. Okay, now well, the way we're doing this is we're measuring the loss in mass, and one of the reactants there you can see is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide escapes into the atmosphere, and that contributes to our reduction in mass. We should say actually mass of the flask and its contents. And if we were to plot a graph of some data on that, we would see the mass would reduce, and eventually that would level out as the reaction stopped but we would seem to see a loss in mass. But in actual fact, that green line is more accurate in terms of the products because that green line is the total mass of the calcium chloride, the carbon dioxide, and the water. Although that carbon dioxide has been lost, if you added the masses, they would all be the same. So we mustn't be fooled during chemical reactions if one of the products is a gas. Another example we have where there might be a confusing a scenario with the change in the mass of reactants is when we react magnesium with oxygen in the air to get magnesium oxide. Now the oxygen in the air obviously is not uh, easy to see getting involved in this reaction. And the, way we'd do the, way, the way we would do this experiment is we'd get some magnesium, put it in a piece of apparatus called a crucible with a lid. We would heat it strongly under the blue Bunsen burner flame. So you may have done this in class, but if not, we would heat it strongly, we would lift the lid with tongs very gently to allow the oxygen in. You would never touch that lid because it would be very, very hot. But you could lift it gently with tongs to allow the oxygen in to allow the magnesium to fully react. And then we end up with magnesium oxide, which is a white powder. Now, if we were to measure the mass of the magnesium beforehand, we could get, for example, 10 grams, and then we would notice that at the end of the experiment, the mass of the magnesium oxide has increased. It seems like there is an increase in the mass of the products compared to the reactants. And that's because the oxygen there is not very easy to see. You won't be able to see it reacting. So we can put a little G there to show that's oxygen. And we know that oxygen comes from the air and that would react with the magnesium to make magnesium oxide. However, if we balance that equation and include all the reactants, we would see a formula mass for magnesium of 48, for oxygen it's 32. And for our magnesium oxide, it's 24 plus 16, which is 40. And two of those would give us a total of 80. So 24 plus 16 times 2, that's 80. And if we add our formula masses for the magnesium and the oxygen, we also get 80. So there we still have the conservation of mass. So there we have it, um, two ways in which you might be confused by this idea of conservation of mass if you don't see some of the products, i.e. when they are gla uh, gases. So we must be careful in those scenarios. But that's it for the video for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.